Why do you want to do the work when AI is make it easier for you? AI is not going to overtake you. AI is not going to replace you. It does not have your personality. But AI is just a tool. So basically, you just need to make AI your bitch. And that's about it. Nothing else. That's what AIs are. They are tools to make your life easier. To make sure that you work more effectively and efficiently. AIs. Let's talk about them. AIs rule the world. Whether you like it or not. I mean, AI has existed way before ChatGPT, and we always knew that they were gonna grow and become basically revolutionized. And ChatGPT is just a revolutionized tool that was created by OpenAI. With so many AI tools popping from left and right, it's really, really hard to keep an overview and understand and also know what is the best tool for what you want to achieve and what you want to accomplish. And currently, there's not one AI tool that does everything. I mean, I think GPT-4 in the future is going to do everything and basically get rid of all the competition. But currently, that is not the case. So let's check out some of the AI tools that I basically use every single day and I think that are great that are not ChatGPT or GPT-4. Also, in this era of AI-generated content and AI-generated work, you need to use AIs if you want to survive, basically, if you want to be competitive with others, you have to use AIs because they just make your life easier. I don't understand why some people just don't want to use AIs. I mean, I use them all the time. And as like I said, I use a lot of tools. I have a lot of tools that I use and they basically help me not only create content, but also with my work, with my fitness, with every single part of my life. AIs have helped me so, so much. It has made my life way easier because to be honest, I have a lot to do. I do a lot. I like doing a lot. And without AIs, it would have been a little bit hard to keep it in control. One tool that I wish existed when I was a student is PDF GPT because it would have made my life way, way easier. So PDF GPT basically analyzes your PDFs for you and gives you the information that you need from it. So basically, if you want to have a PDF summarized or if you wanted to analyze, if you wanted to give you the most important keywords or the most important phrases, all of that. So it's basically perfect for students and people who do like research papers or write research papers, write essays, and they have to read all of those. Because to be honest, I read so many research papers during like my uni days that I wish this one existed and I just didn't have to read them because some of them were just not necessary for me to sit down and read like 20 pages about something that was irrelevant, but I still did. So I wish this one existed. I get a lot of questions when it comes to the sound of my YouTube videos and how I get it to sound this crisp. This is basically my secret. It's Adobe Enhance. So basically I use Adobe Enhance for the sound of my YouTube videos because it makes it sound professional, like it was taken in a professional studio. I don't have a studio. As you guys can tell, I just have this mic and that's it. And I speak into it and it's on the floor. I mean, even with this mic, the sound is not as crisp as I would like it to be. But when I use Adobe Enhance, it makes it sound like I'm in a really beautiful studio. The sound was taken professionally and you guys enjoy listening to it. Another tool that a lot of creators use and that I sometimes use for my B-rolls is NVIDIA. NVIDIA is basically a text to video AI tool. So you basically write down whatever you wanted to create and it will basically generate it for you. It will also give you a video script. So this tool is perfect for people who want to create like a no face content. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of no face accounts out there that just give you general information and they're pretty, pretty successful to be honest. So if you want to like create that type of content, go ahead. NVIDIA is the one for you. Let's check out how NVIDIA works. I just entered race car driving and this is what it created. Have you ever wondered how race car driving evolved from dirt tracks to the high tech circuits of today? The world of race car driving is a high octane blend of speed, skill and technology. But it wasn't always this way. In the early 20th century, motor racing was a raw and risky affair. I know that OpenAI just came out with Sora, which is, let's just say Sora is a game changer. I mean, if you don't want to work with Sora, then NVIDIA is a good alternative. But I will also recommend you guys to check out Sora because it is an incredible tool. I mean, the videos that usually come out there, it's, it's surreal. That's what Sora is. Sora is just surreal for me. This AI tool is basically ChatGPT and Microsoft Bing in one, which is perplexity. 
I wish Perplexity was there when I was a student. It would have made my life so much easier. As you guys can tell, I just wish AIs were there when I was a student. Because honestly, I did so much work. And now that I have so many AIs that not only help you study, but also will help you basically do your research and all of that, I think it's amazing for students. And I think a lot of I should just make a video regarding AIs for students. Maybe that will be easier for everyone. That just let me know if you guys want to watch that. But yes, I use Perplexity for a lot of things. I use it for research because I still read research papers. I'm still interested in like academia and I do read a lot of research papers, not only regarding tech, but also regarding other stuff. Um, and I enjoy reading them. And I think Perplexity is the tool for that because ChatGPT usually makes up information i don't know where it got it from but it just makes up information but perplexity does not perplexity will give you all the resources that it got that information from so perplexity will basically give you accurate information regarding everything you want to know the only thing that i don't use perplexity for is coding because i think gpt4 is better at that if you want to like write fast code but if you want to do a lot of research because Let's be honest, coding is a little bit of research. You need to research the best tools for like the best libraries and stuff that you want to use. And I think I use Perplexity for that instead of like GPT-4 or ChatGPT. So that's what I use Perplexity for. I mean, you should always check it out, especially when it comes to like studying tips or also productivity tips or even like online courses that you should take and all of that. Perplexity has more information than ChatGPT does and even more information than Google does because it will not only give you the information, it will also tell you where it got it from. So a lot of research that I do for my videos and also for like my IG videos or the tips that I give you guys, it's I research it with Perplexity because it's faster. I don't have to like Google it and read article after article. Perplexity does that for me. So I just have to check it out and see if they're good or not and then basically filter them out myself. That's the only thing that I do. And it's way, way easier with perplexity than it would have been if I did not have perplexity. Also, when it comes to writing code, I just want to mention this. ChatGPT will create a lot of bugs for you and you should not write backend code with ChatGPT. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it may leak your code. Um, I don't think these AI stuff are safe because, I mean, we had a lot of like news regarding leaks in chat gbt so if you don't want your code to get leaked then i wouldn't do that just write it yourself or just do it with stack overflow like we have done it for years um but like front end stuff it's easy you can just do it with chat gbt and stuff and it will create a lot of bugs that that's true and which then you have to basically fix but please read the code and don't just copy it because I've heard a lot of developers just copy the code that ChatGPT gives them. You need to read it because most of the things that it gives you are kind of wrong. Another AI tool that I use is Stable Diffusion. It's basically an AI tool that generates images for you. So text to image. I mean, we already had text to video. Now we have text to image. So if you want to create an image or if you want to use it as a like, I don't know what you want to use your images for. I mean, icons, I generate them with AIs, especially when it comes to like creating content and stuff. When it comes to like videos and images, you always have to keep in mind that creators usually use images that are non-copyrighted because images are copyrighted. So we cannot use images that are just out there. We have to check out if they are, if they have like a copyright on them or if they don't have a copyright of them and they belong to someone, they don't belong to someone, all of those stuff. But with AI generated content, that is not the case. You generated it more like AI generated it. So it's non-copyright, right? That's why it just makes it way easier for creators to just use AI to generate videos and content. Also, there are so many text to image tools out there. I mean, Microsoft came out with one. I tried it. It's really good. And um, also Adobe has one. Now this AI tool is for my developers out there. It's Teardraw. I think if you're already a developer or if you want to create and don't want to code, you already know about this tool, but Teardraw is a revolutionary tool. You just need to draw your website and then add your functionality as text, exactly as text. And then it will turn your text into a functional website 
using your drawing as well as obviously using your design. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed the AI tools that I presented. And if you guys want to know about more tools, more like tools for students specifically, then just let me know and I'll make a video on that because I know a lot of tools and I try out a lot of tools because I just like doing that. It just, AI is just, I don't know, amazes me.